Hey everybody, welcome to another tutorial lesson. In this one, we're going to be going over the Blender Kit sculpting brushes. They're free. You do have to pay to get some of them, just like all the other assets, but there's more than enough in there to get you started. And I really haven't seen anybody cover that, so we'll be going over that today. And if you don't know where to get that, then I will have a link down below and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to get great content about Blender. And let's get started. All right, so just kind of doing this little sci-fi scene here. I don't know if you've followed any of my previous tutorials, but I'm making a lot of um, cities in space, and right now I'm working on the space station. It's a pretty fun little project. Um, these are actually real space stations out here that I could flip to if I wanted to uh, with the camera. But the main focus is gonna be the brush um, the blender kit provides, or should I say brush is. So I'm just gonna grab this little object I've got here and hit forward slash. Uh, this was a Taurus, I'm just kind of messing around with this thing. And what we're gonna do is we'll just grab a few objects and start practicing. All right, so I've got the viewport set up with a few different objects we are gonna go over. And I'll just start with the default cube. And let's see, I'm, gonna, I'm in edit mode, so I'll just hit W and I'll subdivide that and then I'll hit shift R and just add a little bit more mesh to it. it looks good, I'm gonna jump out of edit mode. Now I wanna bring up blender kit. So I'll just make this easy and this will be my sideways screen. All right, so inside of blender kit, you've got brushes. And just real quick, if I didn't mention it, um, when you download blender kit, You'll find that over here at blenderkit.com, actually. And then you can just download that. It is an add-on, so once you've downloaded it, as usual, you would jump back over to Blender, go into Edit, Preferences, and then click Install. Find it wherever you downloaded it, highlight it, and then click Install Add-on. And then it should pop up right here and you can check it on. Make sure if you're on auto save or not, you can hit save preferences, feel better about your life, and then you can jump right in. And then it'll be down here in the end panel, which I like everybody else have to turn on my screencast keys after I've started. And so you can see what I'm doing down here. All right, so I'm gonna start with a cube. I'll just drop a cube in. I'll bring that up to the grid. I hate the lines going through it. Sometimes it's useful. Not this time. And what I will do is subdivide this a few times. I think four, I think five times is pretty good. I want a ton of mesh on this. You could do less if your computer won't, um, won't do more. I'll drop a cast modifier on it to just kind of make it a little bit better of a sphere and I will apply both of those. I'll hit my Q which is my quick and just shade the smooth and then auto smooth and we should have a fairly perfect sphere. So what I'll do is I'll jump into the sculpting tab and let's see I'll press one just so I can have a, a specific side that I'm looking for and in your end panel You can go ahead and pull up the blender kit and we'll just kind of get that situated. There's a few things you'll have to set up. I've already got a few brushes that I pulled. Um, all you have to do is go into the brushes right here and you got a little winky eye right there. You can just hit enter in the search bar and what it'll do is it'll tell you 154 different results. It means you got 154 different brushes. Some of them have the lock symbol on so you can't really mess with all those unless you pay for the blender subscription to this, but there's also a bunch of free stuff as well. So you can kind of slink through here, grab, say, a brick texture, pull it in, and it'll download it and put it up here. And if you've got a new one, you can just bring it in. The download screen was a little too quick. Let's see if I can just find one that'll take a second. And you can like look right here, boom, downloading. And so now I've got all these brushes to choose from, which 
None of these are bad. You can use all the static ones that comes with Blender. It's fine. But I really like having the option of some actual brushes that have presets. Because I don't have time to create an uh, entire pattern from scratch. You get too many other things going on. And the more you learn about Blender, the same thing will happen to you. So I'll grab the brick pattern. So a couple things. Um, you're going to want to play with the strength and see where you want the strength. You're also going to want to turn on dynamic topology. You can turn on shades, um, smooth shading. That way it looks good, doesn't look like garbage. And from here, if you tap F, you can see the texture that you're getting ready to put on there. Now there's a couple of other things, like under the Dino tab, I bring this to like right around eight pixels. It's pretty important. Otherwise, when you're painting this on here, it's not really gonna look right. So I just kinda, if I just click on it one time, you can see it kind of imprinted. And then from the side, it doesn't necessarily look like your texture, but um, that has a lot to do with the strength and the radius and the pixels and whether or not your shade's smooth. And so you can kind of get in here and kind of mess with this any way you want. You can just left click and add as you go. Try to be gentle with it. So you don't add too much. You don't raise the topology too much. That's not bad. That could be, it is the pattern. It's the pattern. It's not great by any means, but um, sculpting is not something I do a lot of. I, I depend on a lot of procedural textures. So. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. So we can go with that. And just as an example, we can get on the other side and grab another brush. And like these ornaments right here, I haven't really got these to work tremendously well, but if you just left click and hold it, the pattern will come out and you can kind of twist it. Just never let go of the left mouse button. And you can see the pattern there, it's pretty cool. So if I was just to drop that right there, you can see that the ornamental pattern is pretty much identical and then you've got this uh, scar set up here and you got to kind of twist and pull some of these so the brushes work a little different on some of them so now we've got the scar here and the bricks kind of don't want that um, also if you go back in real quick uh, you kind of scan through here you'll see some that have like a viewport uh, shading color to them already and it could just be me but once you grab one of those get back up here once you grab one of these and drop it in it'll download and then it'll be up here um, like feathers or something like that and they work really well so you just kind of click and add some different textures in not textures but some different sculpting points um, and it is important that you subdivide your mesh or and change the pixels So don't just go in here and start doing one plane because there's no loop cuts in it It's no mesh. It's just it's not gonna look good All right, so from here we could just have a little fun jump over to the shading tab I'll hit one because that was my view I'll kick all this out press the end get rid of it I'll make a new and so if you don't know these are material nodes for texturing and so I can just grab the base and left click drop that out and what I'll do is I'll just put in brick and get a brick texture and that'll pop up and it comes up pretty wonky so I don't really want it looking like that and I don't see anything over here to actually change it so I'm going to grab the vector and left click drop that type in mapping that way I've got a little mapping node here and then from this vector, you can left click, drop that, and type in COOR and get a texture coordinate. Now I'm going to control right click slash that. And if you don't have your um, Node Wrangler on, then you're going to need to enable the Node Wrangler up here in the edit menu under preferences because that is an add on that comes free with Blender. So if you type in Node, you see I've got the arranged presets in Node Wrangler all along. So you'll need that. I'll take object, 
and plug that into vector, which is one of my static things I like to do. And then you kind of play with the rotation till you get it where you want. And then I can move the X up and down, but I'm not gonna mess with that. I'll leave that at zero. I'm gonna take the Y or Z, however you wanna call it, type in 90 and flip it around. So now that texture is kind of where I want it. Looks good. So what you can do is go to scale and I teach this in one of my other tutorials. You can just left click, highlight those and drag them to the right to scale your texture up and down as you see fit. Just to whatever actually looks good we were trying to achieve. And then if you don't like one particular uh, part of it, you can kind of change that if you want. There we go, just kind of line these up a little better. All right, so going back and forth here, um, from the front, it kind of messed it up so the texture doesn't apply perfectly, but had I gone just a little bit lighter with the strength, would have ended up pretty nice. Got some kind of like rough texture pattern here that's actually real, and then you project it on there with the texture coordinate, and it actually looks pretty good. And you can go in if you feel like it and change some colors around, make stuff like look a little bit more like brick. And um, not too bad. So for the back side, and since we were in uh, one on the number pad, you can just hit Control One, and it'll flip 100% to the back. So obviously I grabbed that a little bit offset, no big deal. So what I want to do is I'm going to pull up the texture properties here, and I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to pull up Philogix, which is uh, PBR. It's PBR Painter. It's actually one of my sponsors, and this file has to be saved in order to use it. You'll see there's a little funky symbol there. If I just hit Control S and just save this as one sculpt and just hit enter and now I can just hit new picks shader and I've got a material here I'll just call this base and if you're familiar with any layered systems uh, that's what this is it also has uh, smart materials which is incredible so real quick you just go into the baking I could just kind of drop the resolution down so it goes a little faster I'm going to bake my normal, my ambient, and my curvature. It shouldn't take more than a second or two. Yeah, see it's already baking that one. And it's a tutorial on its own to go through it. But up here, and let me just collapse this baking and have the paint layers down. The eyeball here, just like in Blender, they keep everything static. You can go ahead and look at the base, the metallic, the roughness, and it'll show you all those different maps because it baked them. It can show you the normal map. It can show you the, um, the roughness if we have it. And then, of course, the regular material, the ambient occlusion, everything. And there's obviously some. But I'll go back to material, and I'm just going to do a smart material. So I'm going to click right here and add one and scroll down. This is why I love PBR Painter, because you don't have to do a whole lot of stuff if you're trying procedurally just to kind of like get somewhere. And I'll put a smart layer of steel on there. Go from UV to box so that shows up better. There we go. Oh, that looks a lot nicer. Now, what we can do from here is go back to the base and add in a layer. And let's see, I'll make that layer something like, and turn that to box as well. Make that something like a, uh, a dust layer. That's pretty cool. And then you can come down here and you can change the detail values, your AO a little bit and then the actual value just lessen the rust or add a little bit more according to texture you can also kind of blend this in if you can see how that's going to work not really on that one now you can change the opacity or opacity if you wish and kind of get that rust mixed with some paint 
that's pretty good. And then I can blend that in a little bit. If I want, I can change where that paint is or where the rust is. Since this is a full functioning layer system, even when you're using smart materials. So I could go to the roughness and turn it down a little bit if I wanted to. And if I don't like that, then I can click in between the two materials, even if you don't name them. This one obviously points to a layer, and this one obviously points to our smart steel. I could go to a smart rust. Wait for that to load. It's pretty quick, even on a slow computer. I've had a much slower computer than this before. I'm using the um, RTX 3060 right now. You could change around with the bump maps, curvature. We don't have a lot of curvature to work with. The service screen. And just kind of play around with it till it looks good. Looks like what you're looking for. Maybe blend it in just a little bit better. You can change the scale back and forth if it's applicable. All right, now in order to make this look better, I'm going to move the, uh, the material in the hierarchy up one. And now that is exactly what I wanted. All right, so I've got this um, craziness going on right here because the, um, the map is not reading the entire mesh. So what I'll do is I'm going to jump back over to the Sculpting tab and click the Remesh button on this. Probably going to zap a lot of my texture, but just for the example, and I'll jump back over to the layout. Okay, that looks a lot better. So now you can see the textures, and on PBR, it's, it's intense, man. You can get really close. Look, I'm actually clipping. Let me see if I can fix that. I don't like clipping. There we go. That was viewport clipping. If you don't know how to do that, you check out, uh, pull your end panel and go to view and just go to clip start and you can see where pretty much where the viewport is clipping. And I just bring that all the way back to the left and hit N and now you've got this wonderful rusty mesh here. You can see the entire thing. And look how close I can zoom into that. That's incredible. But PBR is really good. Yeah, you can grab that if you want it's a little bit more of a pricey add-on at $35 but I would consider it to be well worth it anyways I hope this tutorial helped you out and you were able to learn just a little something about the sculpting brushes and a little something about PBR smart textures which are immense in saving time hit that like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video thank you for watching